Sure. One, one, one. Hey, Vikes fans, Berserker88 here. Vikings got another win. It was a tough win. It was an ugly win, but it was still a win. The Rams took us to overtime. Even after missing a field goal was less than two minutes in the game. Thanks to our questionable play calling, the Rams got the ball back and still got a field goal to take us into overtime. All the Vikings had to do was run the clock out. And they couldn't get it done. Zerker, you got anything to add before we start to recap? Hell of a game, huh? Whoa, you're looking a little frazzled there, buddy. I think we all kind of feeling that way. We'll talk about that later. Let's get talking about the game now. Rams first series, they attempted a pass play on first down. And on second down, they gave it to Gurley. The Gurley men. He was stuffed by Barr and Joseph. Followed by another com incomplete pass. It was a three and out. Good job, defense. Defense. Vikings get the ball at the St. Louis 46 after punt of 25 yards, thanks to the wind. The Vikings move the ball with a nice catch from right on a third and 10 for 12 yards. But the drive stalls when Teddy throws what should have been a pick, but the Rams dropped it. Walsh comes out and kicks a 34-yard field goal. It's good. It's up. That is good. 0-3 Vikings. The Vikings... D forces a punt after four plays. On the second possession, of the Minnesota Vikings start at their 20-yard line. There are a lot of flags on this uh, series, and I predicted 11 flags on Velspar. And it looks like the Rams might get that in the first quarter. Teddy hits a wide-open CJ for 25 yards. He follows it up with a 9-yard pass to Peterson and another short pass to Rudy. For, and he takes it for 15 yards. Another pass to Pruitt gets it down to the Rams' six. Pearson runs it in from there. Touchdown, Vikings. Ah, touchdown! It's 0-10, Vikings. It's looking good. Gurley gets stuffed on first down, but gets five yards on second down. Austin gets 10 yards on the third and six. You know, you know. The run D is stuffing everything up the middle. The Rams connect on a deep pass on third and five. Newman got beat deep, and the Rams are set up at our six-yard line. Gurley touchdown. And the Rams go for two. What? They don't make it. Why did Fisher do that? It's because you're a dumbass. 6-10 Vikings at the end of the first quarter. Vikings offense sputters thanks to the Rams holding our receiver. Should have been a flag. Flag? Flag. Even the announcers say that the Rams uh, defender got away with one. We punt. Rams connect on another deep pass for 23 yards and try a 61-yard field goal with the wind, and it's good. It's 9-10, Vikings. Uh-oh. The kickoff was a touchback, and the Vikings can only muster 15 yards before punting. Austin and Gurley help the Rams move the ball down to the Vikings 17. Their drive stalls and kick a field goal. 12-10, Rams. On this series, the Vikings offense gains 21 yards before punting. On a third and eight, we complete a four-yard route. Then we punt with 145 left in the half. Rams get the ball at their 15, and Austin still runs ends around end arounds for 13 and 22 yards. Yeah, he, he did that a lot today. Followed by a short pass taken for 20 yards, and the Rams get a field goal to end the half. 15-10 Rams, halftime. At the start of the second half, which I missed, Patterson takes the kickoff and returns it out to the Vikings 47. Good return, or so I'm told. Teddy connects with Rudy for 15 and then throws an interception in the end zone, which I also missed. Damn it. The Vikings D force a three and out. The Rams have to punt. Joseph is playing well today. That might be an understatement, but he's playing really well. He's doing his best McKinney on a boat impersonation on all the running plays. Is that, is that football related? He's eating up everything in sight. <sighs> Fine. <laughs> Pearson and Diggs takes it down to the Rams 15 where McKinnon takes it to the 6 on a pass play from Teddy. 
Then Teddy scrambles in for a touchdown. Yes! And we go for two. Two-point conversion is also Teddy's, and it's good. 15-18 Vikes. Now, I can understand why we went for two. The other one, eh. The Vikings D force another three and out, but we lose Newman in the process. Waynes comes in to replace him, and the Rams punt. Vikings get the ball, but their drive stalls thanks to throwing short of the sticks on third down. But we held somebody, and the Rams give us another opportunity to make first down. Not sure why they did that. Well, because of the wind, but anyway. Next play, Teddy is hit after he tries to throw it deep. He is hit low, and he is hit late. There is no flag. Flag? And we punt. Rams ball on their 20. Gurley gets a yard on first down. He has 13 carries for 34 yards so far. Gurley man. Rams receiver drops a deep pass, but Joseph gets flagged for roughing. D forces a three and out after the penalty. Rams punt. Two plays later, the quarter ends. 15-18 Vikings. Fourth play into the fourth quarter, and a St. Louis player tries to take Teddy's head off with his shoulder while Teddy is sliding. It looked like a cheap shot. Coach Z thinks it was a cheap shot. He's not happy at all. Teddy is taken out of the game. Hill comes in and we punt. I think we should punt on first down if we have Hill as our quarterback and Peterson fumbles the ball two times in a row. I think punting on first down might be our best option. Get our defense back on the field. The Rams and Vikings exchange possessions down to the five minute mark. Hill is so bad that it's Peterson's job to try to win this. But we seem to pass at the wrong time or we try to pass at the wrong time and we just kill our own drives. Rams take the ball at their 35 with 5 minutes left. And Gurley starts to gain some yards. He gets the ball to the Minnesota 30-yard line. Rams try a field goal with a minute 45 left. And they miss it. Big sigh relief. Vikings take over with a minute 45 left in the game. Or right around there. On the first play, they roll Hill out. And he is sacked for a negative 11 yards. Why? Why did we why did we make, try that play with a backup quarterback? Well that uh, <sighs> After Teddy went down, Pearson ran six times for 32 yards. And yet we try to roll this guy out and uh All we need to do is run the clock. That's all we need to do is run that clock out. I, 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 and now we're third and, or second and forever and third and forever and we punt. And of course the Rams move the ball into field goal range and it's good. 18-18. Overtime. Vikings win the coin toss and they take the wind. They let the Rams have the ball first and they choose which side they're defending. Here's what the Rams do with their plays in overtime. First down, Gurley goes for negative six. But alas, the girly man is a formidable opponent. That's right. But hear me now and believe me later. We can easily crush girly men like grapes. That's right. Austin catches a pass for no gain. Incomplete pass on third down, and they have to punt. Defense does its job. On this series, the Vikings give the ball to Pearson four out of five plays, and he gains 25 yards. He'll complete the six-yard pass as well. Walsh comes in and kicks a 40-yard game winner. Second week in a row that Walsh kicked the game winner. He's the hero. Good job, Walsh. All that early season hand-wringing may have been for naught. We'll have to see. After the game, Zimmer's handshake to Fisher was more like, uh... All right, fuck you, buddy. I think he was still pissed about those hits on Teddy. The Vikings win. 6-2, and two, leading their division. 6-2 and two, on a four-game win streak. Next up is the Raiders. Or whatever, however he says that. Should be another good game. Another chance to get another road win. I'm Berserker88, your Vike fans, Skull Vikings. <laughs>